All right, everybody. Well, I'm going to begin with tonight's travel presentation. We're going to do an express escape. It's Monday night. It's a 30 minute presentation to take you on a destination trip to go to another side of the world. Tonight, we're going to go to Australia. So I'm going to get their screen on and we'll get underway because we've got a lot to cover. This is a big destination. It's a huge country and there's a lot of things to see and do down under. So there's a picture of me. Um, again, my name is Dave Wentworth. If I'm new to you and I run Destination Whatever, Destination Whatever is my travel agency and it's aimed to connect my passion for discovering the world with curious folks looking to get out and have adventures on their own. So here's a little bit a uh, bit. oops. <laughs> get my slides going here tonight folks here's a bit about what i do um so i like to connect people with small group tours i like to connect people with expedition type of trips so unique sailings uh places that go to the polar regions of the world or unusual waters river and ocean cruising we'll take a look at a cruise today that does australia full circumnavigation I like to work on uh, promoting the idea that adventures can be for everybody. An adventure can be as thrilling as going up Mount Kilimanjaro or Mount Everest, but it can also be as fun as an art adventure in Europe. Or what about a cultural holiday through Southeast Asia? All these things are adventures and we can all do that. Let's talk about unique destinations. I've been to a lot of them. I like to promote unique destinations, but even within mainstream destinations like Australia, I like to promote ideas that you might not have thought about. And tonight we're gonna to look at some options in Western Australia and South Australia that don't often fall into the mix, but that might appeal to you. My background is in international development. That's what I studied at university. I focused on how tourism could be used as a responsible vehicle for development. And with my passion for travel, I've been to almost 40 countries on six continents. I have over a decade of experience working with Canadians from coast to coast, helping them discover what they can do on their adventures and help them connect with destinations, sometimes places they only dreamed about or they didn't know that they could visit and a little travel education for me. And then they're booked and they're on their way. So I love when that happens. I have probably worked with hundreds of Canadians coast to coast on going to Australia. So this is a destination I have a ton of experience with. And also, um, cause I was just gonna mention that I have passion for languages, including German. You'll see why tonight, because there is some uh, German culture in Australia, but also just learning about the world. And as far as Australia goes, I've had curiosity about Australia since I was really, really little. And I first learned about the animals and I heard the accent and I saw the landscape. I was hooked. I knew this was a destination that I wanted to visit in my lifetime. So if you have some travel questions about Australia or if you're watching this presentation afterwards and perhaps, um, you know, and you want to ask me a question, you can certainly do that by reaching out on my website. I've got a section dedicated just to that. So you can click on there, pop your question off to me and get a personalized response. Another thing you can do on my website is you can book a Zoom. I love to do a 30 minute complimentary Zoom with folks. This can be a great way if you're thinking about going on a trip like to Australia and you want to start the conversation, maybe get an idea of what I do, how I might be able to help you, some ideas, ask some questions. This is a great way to make that first connection with each other and see how we can do, um, take your travel and turn it into a reality. Dreams to reality. All right. So let's get going to Australia because again, we got so much to cover tonight in just 30 minutes. Where is Australia located? Australia is an island nation. It's located in the Southern Hemisphere. It's surrounded by the Indian and the Pacific Oceans and it has a diverse uh, landscape, a lot of uh, wildlife. We typically think about the Australian outback, which is a big part of the middle of Australia. We typically think of the coasts of Australia. You can see it's an island, lots of coastline. And we typically think about rainforest, and we're gonna be looking at that today in particular, places like the Daintree, but also really green areas, like you'll see when we look at Tasmania, some fantastic greenery on Tasmania. So another way we can look at Australia, another map, it shows how weather patterns would move around Australia, how currents would move around Australia. It also shows that we have a number of cities on Australia's east coast. And so Australia's population is heavily concentrated on its Pacific coastline. 
Here's another map of Australia showing different regions or the states of Australia. Australia has a number of states and then two territories. So if we start off at the left, we have Perth. That's the main city and gateway of Western Australia. And then if we go in uh, clockwise, we'll go up to Darwin in the Northern Territory, gateway to the top end and places like Kakadu, down to Alice Springs in the middle. That would be a gateway for a lot of travelers going to the Outback. That's where I went to go for my Outback experience. And then if we go over to Queensland, we can start up in the north in Cairns, uh, where we have gateway to the Great Barrier Reef and the rainforests up there. Down the coast, we have Brisbane, which is the main season, uh, main city for Australia, or pardon me, main city for Queensland is uh, Brisbane. Then we go down Sydney and New South Wales, another big city. And we have Melbourne um, as well, another big city in Victoria. And then off to the side, we have Tasmania. It's an island. The main city there would be Hobart. I traveled there, so I've got some pictures from um, there I can send to you. All right, Australia is, um, <clears throat> this is the wrong slide. It's not Europe's seventh largest country. Um, it is, the capital city is Canberra. Its population is 400,000 people. The population of Australia is 25.7 million. The language is English with distinct, distinct phases. And I've got some information here from Germany that's crossed over. I really don't know why that is. But I did want to let you know that tourism is a chief part of Australia's industry. It is the fourth largest aspect of the Australian economy, and it employs over 600,000 people. Uh, currency, Germany uses the dollar. Again, that should be Australia uses the dollar. And one Canadian dollar is equal to Australian 1.13, so a dollar 13 cents. Uh, credit card pay is common throughout, and you can use TAP, so pretty much the same type of payments that you would use in North America, you can use in Australia. The electricity is going to be different, though. It is going to be at a 230 volt, um, and it uses the type of outlet that you can see in the picture here. You can get converters if you're going up to Australia. You're going to need that if you're going to want to keep your electricity charged, keep your camera charged, your phone, all that jazz. A lot of USB ports as well throughout Australia, especially in hotels, um, transportation, things like that, or at airports. So you'll find lots of ways to keep yourself charged, but definitely get yourself a charger. All right, in terms of getting to Australia, a lot of folks are are gonna be flying to Australia. It's a long flight, but there's a ton of options from Vancouver. We have services from Air Canada and Qantas that go nonstop. And then we have some great options with Air New Zealand. And that can definitely come up in the mix if you're combining Australia and New Zealand in terms of the nonstop uh, length for flying down there. Depends uh, which city you're going into, which one you're coming back. So I've given you the times going down under and coming back. And Sydney is 19 hours of Vancouver. So commonly what can happen is that you'll arrive two days later. So if you leave on a Monday evening, for example, you'll arrive in Australia on Wednesday morning. You're gonna go through one nocturnal phase on the, the flight. So if people have been to Europe before, you might know what that's like. Uh, but when you get there, it's not Tuesday morning, it's Wednesday morning. And then when you come back, you're gonna get that time back you'll leave australia and sometimes land back on the west coast earlier than what you took off can you sail to australia yes you absolutely can and we're seeing an increase in trans-pacific cruises and um, basically a trans-pacific cruise can happen in a number of ways they can depart from places like vancouver or some of the californian cities and sometimes from Hawaii, if you want to truncate, you can cut off going from North America over to Hawaii and just start your cruise there or end your cruise there. Trans-Pacific cruises are typically going to be going down um, in the late autumn. So if you're thinking about going down under in the late autumn and you want to start off by sailing down there, we could look at finding things that match. And then if you're coming back north, those cruises are going to typically be leaving in the springtime. And a crossing can take between three to four weeks. It just depends on a number of factors. You know, are you going to go all the way across or are you going to just do like the Hawaii to Australia thing? Are you stopping at a lot of islands? Some of the popular islands that people like to visit could include Vanuatu, um, both American Samoa and Samoa, Fiji, sometimes 
uh, French Polynesia, Tahiti. So there's quite a number of islands, but if you've ever thought about wanting to see the South Pacific, this can be a great way to do it because a repositioning cruise is going to take you on a smorgasbord of all of these different islands. It's a full South Pacific. And sometimes just to travel around the South Pacific, you don't find direct flights between the islands. It can be hard to link things up. So this cruising aspect can kind of take you through a lot of different South Pacific countries that you might not visit otherwise. All right, let's get back to Australia. If you get to Australia one way or the other, whether you're sailing or you're flying down under, you're going to need a passport to get you in and you're going to need to have an electronic travel authority to visit Australia. And uh, you can get that online. It's done through an app. It's rather easy. And you can just fill that out and you're good to go. You can have up to a 90 day visit to Australia. So it's easy to get into down under. All right, in terms of getting around down under, flying is going to be your big time saver. Australia is a big place. I like to tell a lot of Canadians that Australia, it's similar in that we have a big country, not a big population. And so sometimes distances from place to place can be far. The amount of services um, in rural or remote areas can be limited. So, you know, thinking about going out to Ayers Rock, for example, flying in is going to be a lot easier on an itinerary, especially if you try to jam in a few things in a few weeks. Um, Australia does have a cool train service. Uh, there's trains um, in terms of like light rail and metro and around the cities, but also there's the famous Gone service that goes across the outback. Australia's cities also feature uh, public transportation, self-driving it's possible. Uh, driving is done on the left-hand side of the road. A little reminder of how that's done. I rented a car the first time I was in Australia. Actually, I, I did it twice uh, on that trip because in different parts I was exploring remote areas and I just wanted to have a car to get around. And it did uh, take a few moments to get used to driving on the other side. It was my first time doing that, but I approached it confidently and it worked out. And especially when you get into some rural areas like here in the outback, you can see there's not a lot of traffic so perhaps that's a good spot to start. I started in a rural area when I first did the side of the road. All right, another thing, speaking of the reverse, the reverse seasons is a factor when you're going to Australia. So it's a perfect reminder that seasonality, it's opposite in the Southern Hemisphere. And that can make Australia a wonderful destination for Canadians if you're looking to get out of our dreary winter. The Australian interior or the outback, it can be hot and dry. And the population, uh, again, we were talking about that earlier, it's mainly going to be found on the East Coast. Um, so just a few things to think about in terms of population, how it's distributed, seasons uh, are going to be opposite. Everything's reverse in Australia. Let's take a look at the map again and go through the region. So just to kind of color code the states with you, um, the first four, we'll start with Queensland. Queensland's a big state. It has a lot on offer. You can easily spend a couple of weeks exploring Queensland, but for most people, it's an idea of going up and down the coast. Uh, we have the Great Barrier Reef that goes along the coastline of Queensland, so it's perfect if you want to indulge in visiting the Great Barrier Reef, whether you're a snorkeler, whether you want a glass bottom boat, there's other water sport activities available with all of that coastline, of course, and some great tropical dimensions. And we'll see that when we get to our pictures, but just to let you know about the Cape Tribulation area and the Daintree Rainforest. This is the world's oldest rainforest, and it's a UNESCO national area right up against the Great Barrier Reef, another UNESCO area. So those things are side by side. We've got Northern Territory located in the middle. Uh, Ayers Rock is located there. Western Australia with the blue check mark, and then the um, rose colored one for South Australia. Coming down, this map is zoomed in to show you that we have Tasmania, the island on the bottom. We have Victoria with the main city of Melbourne, New South Wales with the main city of Sydney. All right, a few tips for Australia as well. Again, it's big, we wanna focus on a few regions, which is exactly what we're gonna do now. We're gonna break down Australia's regions. I'll show you pictures of things that I did there and then also things I like to promote to travelers. But obviously Australia is a lot more than a rock and a reef and a bridge. And so let's just start by going to a place that not a lot of folks go to, the Australian capital of Canberra, and then we'll work our way around in a clockwise. So Canberra, um, Canberra is one of Australia's two territories. So there's the Northern Territory, 
but also ACT, the Australian Capital Territory. And here's what it looks like. It's a beautiful planned city and it's located between Sydney and Melbourne. There's the Australian Parliament House. And there's the Canberra Balloon Spectacular, which is actually happening next month in March. Something to keep an eye on for. It's very beautiful with the balloons, of course. Uh, there's the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex. So I think Canberra would be a fun city to rent a car and drive around the landscape for uh, a couple of days checking out these sites. And then just to the south of that, we would have Victoria. Victoria is mostly known for Melbourne, which is what's pictured here. That's a great city. It's known for its vibrant art scene, its cafe culture. Uh, but also outside of uh, the city, you'd have the Great Ocean Road. And then there's wineries as well in the Yarra Valley. So this is what downtown Melbourne looks like, Flinders Street Station in the CBD. And for travelers, a lot of times you'll see CBD. It's the downtown in Australia, the Central Business District. Here's some Melbourne Beach Boxes, which is an icon uh, that you'll see in Victoria State. You can see penguins. They come to Phillip Island. That's a neat attraction to go to that's not too far from Melbourne. If you like to go and see things from up high, the Eureka Sky Deck is located in Melbourne and it is the highest observation that you can do in the Southern Hemisphere. The Yarra Valley, it's one of Australia's many winery areas. We'll look at a few tonight. So if you're a wine lover, make note of the Yarra. And then the Great Ocean Road, this beautiful um, coastline. The Twelve Apostles is what you see pictured here. So the Great Ocean Road is a stretch of highway. This is just one part of that. Now this water is a perfect segue for us to hop over to Tasmania. I loved visiting Tasmania. Here I am pictured on my trip to Tasmania pointing to a road sign for the uh, Tasmanian Devil. Um, but basically Australia's island of Tasmania has some wonderful nature. It's very green. It's a cooler climate. I was there in winter, so I'll show you what that looked like. But first, one of the things I had to see and do was a Tasmanian Devil. I wanted to go and see one and uh, that's possible. And this was at the um, Bonarong Wildlife Sanctuary just outside of Hobart. So here I rented a car and just drove around Hobart and did explorations from the city. Uh, this was again on day one. Here I am there at the same sanctuary. They have kangaroos. We were able to go in and the kangaroos were very playful. So I love that. And that's what Australia, uh, or specifically Tasmania, looked like in the winter. So I was there in their coolest season, but it was actually, I found quite refreshing, the temperature. Historically charming Hobart, really beautiful city. That's where I based myself. I went out to Port Arthur, which is a historic prison that you can visit in Tasmania. And I went to an area called Tahoon Airwalk, which I really loved. That was an area where you could drive to a park, you paid your mission to go in, and they had all sorts of walking trails, including some elevated walkways like this one. So you get some really cool pictures up in nature. All right, if we go over to South Australia, we could visit South Australia and we could check out some really cool outback um, and we could get some coastline. And we have another winery area, the Barossa Valley. There's also the Clare Valley here. So there's a couple of winery areas. And of Kangaroo Island's another fun one um, for wildlife lovers. And for something really unusual, there's the underground city of Cooper Pedy. What you see pictured here is the main city and gateway of Adelaide. And there's another picture of Adelaide. Beautiful city, smaller city, but definitely a hub city if you're going to be going to South Australia. And then Kangaroo Island nearby. Um, Kangaroo Island is just getting so popular. I'm getting so many people that are asking for it. And it's a great spot to go for a couple of days. Again, if you really want to check out the wildlife, it's literally in the name. I mean, here you can see the kangaroos waiting for you, but also koalas up in the tree and just great coastline there as well and then if we go back over to the mainland to back over to south australia you could check out the barossa valley which is a winery area and of course there's degustations you can sample wine there's the german inspired town of handoff maybe that's why i had those german slides earlier and here's Underground Cooper PD, which is really cool. I remember seeing that in the movie Priscilla way back when. And um, here people have built homes underground. 
And it's a city, or I shouldn't even say city, but it's a community that's dedicated to the mining industry in this part of uh, South Australia. Really cool landscape as well that you can check out. We have a tour coming up in the end of tonight's presentation that will show you a way you can get out to Cooper PD and those sorts of landscapes. All right, next up, Western Australia. Not a lot of people get to Western Australia. It's easy to have it not work out because it is a couple of hours to fly out to Perth. It's almost a whole other concept. But for people that go out there, there's a lot of things that you can check out and do. And we're going to take a look at some of the main attractions now. So just outside of Perth, you could take a ferry over to Rottnest Island. That name, I don't think sells it, uh, but it's a beautiful island, great beaches on the Indian Ocean. And if you're a wildlife lover, you can check out a quokka. And I hope I'm saying that right. Those little cute, charming critters can be found on Rottnest Island. So it's worth going to Western Australia just to check out one of those. Also, we have another winery district here, the Margaret River Wine Region. There's the Wave Rock, so you can get some really neat outback experiences in Western Australia. The Pinnacles Desert with this landscape that looks like something almost from another planet. And then pushing north, you would get to the Kimberley, which is a wonderful outback area, especially if you want to get to remote outback. And if you're in the mood for luxury travel, there are some really amazing options that can be done out in this part of Australia. Let's work our way to the other territory now, where we're looking at Northern Territory, the NT. Uh, Top End is another uh, way we can refer to um, this part of Australia, especially in around Darwin, which is where we'll start. So just outside of Darwin is Kakadu National Park. If you watch the movie Crocodile Dundee and you wanna see those landscapes, Parts of that movie were filmed in the Kakadu National Park. Here we have some crocodiles that you do not want to tangle with, some saltwater crocodiles. And then you have waterways like this or billabongs. Cool landscape like the Devil Marbles just located off the side of the road, pushing down towards Alice Springs. Here's a picture of yours truly just south of Alice Springs. You might not know, but Australia is filled with camels, particularly in the outback, of course tons and tons and tons and tons of camels and here I am riding a camel it was very uncomfortable and that day actually this was a tour I did out of Alice Springs to go out and see the outback and this was to go to Uluru which for me was a highlight also known as Ayers Rock this thing changes colors as the sun sets and that's what we did we watched the sunset you can even see we had a champagne toast and they had all the nibbles laid out there and look at the color of that uh, changing behind us the next day we walked in the Valley of the Winds at Catatuda, which was, um, again, I hope I'm saying that correctly. And uh, so, yeah, basically walking through Australia, uh, Kings Canyon, another highlight from Priscilla, love that. Uh, did an Aboriginal dot painting workshop, which was really cool. It wasn't just about the landscapes, but connecting with the Aboriginal culture. And here I am uh, with my partner. We're traveling in a camping style trip. So these camps are there. They're permanently set up and basically have like a wrought iron bed on the inside. It's nothing fancy, but it's comfortable. I slept like a million bucks out there. There was just such quiet and pristine conditions. And we had washrooms that had showers. And so I was getting a hot shower in the morning. I didn't have to use an outhouse, anything like that. It was just a really cool way to be um, out there in nature and still be comfortable. Here I am on my bus saying goodbye to the outback and my Priscilla moment. And then off to Queensland, we've got a little bit more to finish off tonight. So Queensland, again, we've talked about it a few times now, Great Barrier Reef. Here I am in Coranda, in uh, the just north of Cairns, and uh, yeah, I'm holding a koala bear. So that's something you can do in Queensland if you want to hold a koala bear. I also got to see a kangaroo, which was awesome. And you can see there's a little baby kangaroo foot sticking out of the pouch. Took this train coming back out of there to come back down to Cairns. That was a really fun way to end the day. Love a vintage train ride, and this one did not disappoint. 
also went up to Green Island to go visit the Great Barrier Reef. And that was really great for me. I'm not a scuba person, so I liked doing the glass bottom submarine. That was a great way for me to appreciate that. And here we are going north of the city up towards the Dane Tree. So I rented a car, like I was saying, I did that a couple times in Australia. This was one of those opportunities and drove up to explore the Dane Tree. Had a lot of fun checking that out there. And I've also been to Australia down to Brisbane where I visited the Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary. So another opportunity for me to hold a koala bear. And on that trip, I got out to Moreton Island and got to do a Segway, which is one of my favorite things. So again, beach, koalas, just loved it. New South Wales, a real common gateway because a lot of people may end up going through Sydney on their trips. And there's a lot we can do in Sydney. There's a lot of icons in Sydney. So let's take a look at those. Obviously, you're going to want to see the Sydney Harbour. Behind me is the Sydney Opera House, very famous icon of Australia. And here's another picture of it from another vantage. The bridge right there next to the Opera House. This is picture taken from the Opera House looking at the bridge. So those two icons are side by side as we can see here. I did the bridge climb as well, which was great. And you can see another way that we can identify that close relationship between the Opera House and the bridge. And then on my last day in uh, Australia, the first time I went down under, at least, I went out to the Blue Mountains, which I did just by taking the train from Sydney out to Katoomba. It took about two hours and uh, milled around, just spent the day going around this town, checking out the attractions and just loved that and came back to Sydney that evening. And it was a perfect way to wind down a trip to Australia. All right, so if you want some product here in the last few minutes, we'll take a look at some trips to Australia. We've got some great promotions on till the end of the month. I did some trips to Australia with Intrepid. I do a lot of um, assistance of planning trips to Australia and often Intrepid products will form part of the itinerary for travelers going down under. This is what I did in the Outback to get out from Alice Springs out to the um, areas of Uluru and Kings Canyon. And so this can actually be done through a comfort style where you can stay in hotels or you can camp. There's different ways that you can do it. So one of the things I like to ask people when we're planning a trip to Australia is what type of travel do you want to do? What type of style do you want to do? I loved camping because we didn't have to bring any gear. It was part of the arrangement. So we were able to go out there and experience the camping. You saw the pictures of us at the tents. And yet I didn't have to bring a lot of gear. I didn't have to haul all that down to Australia. I was able to show up participate and have a really meaningful experience. OMG, the stars out in the Outback were amazing. If you had more time in the Outback and you wanted to see, see more of South Australia, this would be a cool trip that can be done with Intrepid. It's an explorer trip. Um, it's a great, comfortable way to get out to see things like Cooper Pedy, that town where they're building things underground, living underground, to go out through some lesser visited parts of South Australia that take you into their outback countryside. There's a two-day add-on as well to go to Kangaroo Island, so that's kind of cool if you want to add that on. Already you're talking about 12 days just in South Australia. That could be a trip in and of itself. Hey, if you love nature and you want to go up and explore that world's oldest rainforest, I would invite you to take a look at this one, Dane Tree, uh, Cape Tribulation Adventure. This one gets you out into nature. It has great opportunity to get up close and personal and learn about Aboriginal culture as well. Um, so this trip has a lot jammed into six days and would be a perfect way to be your Queensland component if you were bouncing around the country doing a few stops. Here's the highlights of Tasmania. If you want to get down to that island and whip around, uh, here's six days that you can check out that starts in Nance and Hobart, and it takes you all the way around. So you're going to get to everything. Uh, if you want a trip that has a couple of components all built onto one itinerary, this has been a really hot seller. It's G Adventures with National Geographic. So top level hotels, great transportation. You can see flights getting you all the way around Australia. Um, really cool experiences, starting in Melbourne, going up to Ayers Rock, Uluru, and then back down to Sydney, uh, behind the scenes tour of the Opera House. Um, then you're going north, you're checking out that beautiful rainforest up in Queensland, all the way up to Port Douglas. This trip has it all. And if you want to go down under and see New Zealand as well, there's a pre-tour that can be done that does New Zealand and then brings you over for this one to Australia. So 
couple of different ways that you can plan your time down there. And if you also want to go to Australia and get around the whole thing, this is a one-off opportunity coming up that is taking place in November. It goes from November 17th to December 22nd, starting and ending in Sydney. It is a 35-day uh, circumnavigation. It is actually on the uh, Western Dam with Holland America and uh, some great options there if you want to see the whole country. Also goes to Komodo Island in Indonesia. So if you like wildlife, you can check it out. Hey, I'm uh, going to let you know that my recorded travel talks are online. If you've missed a travel talk and you want to go back and learn about another place in the world, just check them out on my website, destinationwhatever.com, and you can check out the recorded travel talks section. I have a few other travel talks coming up in the next couple of weeks. Um, so in uh, the month of March, we're going to take a Monday night 30-minute express and go to Newfoundland and Labrador. It's the hottest domestic destination at the moment. I've been getting requests for it. We'll look at tours uh, that go to Newfoundland and Labrador, so some different options there. I've also got a circumnavigation of the island I'll tell you about. Then on the 13th, I'm doing one of my talks with Indian Head Public Library, talking about my expedition river cruise I did last summer to the Amazon jungle. And then on March 25th, we're getting ready for tulip season. We're going to take a trip to the Netherlands. And I am always on the hunt for um, destination requests. So if there's a place that you'd like to hear about and you would like a 30-minute presentation done on it, just let me know and I'd be happy to do your request. If I haven't been there, I probably know a guest speaker who has and I can make that connection happen. Hey, if you need to connect with me, there's my website and you can connect with me on social media, on Facebook and on Instagram. If you want to book any trips, some of those intrepid ones are on sale right now till the end of February, up to 20% off. So make sure to book that with destinationwhatever.com. And that's me, Destination Whatever, custom itinerary, small groups, adventure travel and cruising and the number one travel agency. Well, folks, that's it. 30 minutes goes by in a flash and we went all the way around Australia. Huge country, big, big, big place. And we got there, we started and we finished. We're back in Sydney. You can see those stamps. You've been stamped in and stamped out. I just want to say thanks so much, mates, for coming to hear my presentation. As a reminder, I'm destinationwhatever.com, your number one travel agent. You can connect with me on my website. And I hope to hear from you real soon or see you at an upcoming travel talk. Thanks so much for coming tonight. And thanks for listening. Good night.